Howdy folks, it's Tuesday, February 14th, 2012. I'm Skip Ruddertail, your Otter Editor, and welcome to episode 25 of the Bad Dog Book Club. 25 is a biggie, so we're, we're getting on towards a year now, which is pretty cool. And I wanted to say happy Valentine's Day to everybody. So I uh, hope you are spending the time with your significant other or on the prowl for a significant other. Either way, I wish you luck and happiness. Uh, this week's story comes to us, uh, well, Rechan submitted in because he's editing a new anthology. It's called Will of the Alpha, Tales of Erotic Bondage and Domination. And it's going to be released at Furry Fiesta. It's published by Fur Planet. And authors include several people we featured on this show, including Candrel, White Yodi, and Sparf, and today's story by Hawk Wolf. So there are ten stories, two poems, with an orientation breakdown of four gay, three straight, two bi, and one lesbian, and a partridge in a pear tree. Stories also range from mild kink to, well, this is one of the hardest stories in the book. So with that said, that's Retchen's note, and thank you, buddy. Uh, with that said, this is a pretty intense story. Um, if you're not into uh, some hardcore sex, and we do mean hardcore, stay away from it. If you are, or if you feel like giving yourself a challenge, which I always encourage, stick around, enjoy the story, and Toonses and I will be back to discuss it next week. Once again, happy Valentine's Day, and enjoy the story. Oh, and I almost forgot. I apologize now, but it's read by me. Attachments by H.A. Kirch, otherwise known as Hawk Wolf. I have a surprise for you, still coming over at six. The message sender was a Doberman-like dog whose head sidelined the text bubble with the name Derry underneath it. Leo tickled inside as he looked at the suave, rackish dog, even as a tiny headshot on his cell phone. The red fox had an hour and a half to prepare himself in his condo for his third date with the dark, towering dog. The first two had been in a restaurant and a dessert bar, both with extended, heavy petting goodbyes at the Beauceron's apartment. Maybe the surprise would be something more fitting of the stunning leather-clad photos on Daryl Springer's Kinkfest web profile. Leo put on an old set of yellow and white biking gear while he worked, a running black Mustang emblazoned in a full gallop across his slender pecs. Half an hour after the message, and just as he was about to start the kitchen floor, someone rang the doorbell. He muttered under his breath, then padded over and answered it without even looking. He opened it to a tall, sharp-eared canine in a charcoal frock coat, black leather dress gloves, dark slacks, and what looked like retro black dress shoes. Ah, Dari, you're really early. Dari had a black leather duffel bag with him, large and almost stately. The dog smiled. Surprise! No, this is the surprise. He hefted the bag. Could you put it over on the sofa? Leo took the heavy, boutique fancy bag and groaned as it almost toppled him forward. Surprise? Leo had a surprise, too. He scooped the bag in both arms and carried it over to the sofa, then set it down on the middle cushion. I really wasn't expecting you yet, so I was, uh, cleaning. Sorry for the attire. My surprise is right in front of me, Dari. It's right there, Leo thought to himself. Dari gave Leo a dog smile as he stepped across the room. Why would I complain about a fox in spandex? You look great. I look like I should be in the Tour de France, Leo said, dodging Dari and grabbing the mop, running it over to the utility closet. When he turned around, Dari was right there. The fox yipped and backed up into the closet door. Hey, don't sneak. This isn't the surprise either, Dari said, muzzle tipped down, growl in his voice, but a grin on his muzzle. He swung his coat off and handed it to Leo, who took it like a rack takes a towel. When Dari had his hands free, he unbuttoned his shirt stripper style, pulling the cowboy shirt snaps apart and exposing a black leather polo shirt with a lace collar. Leo clutched the dog's coat in front of his own groin. He smiled. What are you going to do now? Take off your pants? No, you are, 
Tari said, stepping forward to nudge his sharp muzzle against Leo's ear, directing the soft directive right into Leo's blushing flesh. The fox gulped and reached for Dari's fly. Not only was the dog hard, but he wasn't wearing a belt. He gave a testing pull, and just like the shirt, it popped apart with almost no effort. Underneath, yet more leather. Leo's hand shook as he felt around, black fingertips gliding over the body fit black hide. Riding breeches, unflared, reinforced seat, double zip sailor front. Leo's hands tingled, and he momentarily lost control, towels sliding off his tilted forearm and puddling down at the floor. He grappled with the rest of the dog's pant leg, and it opened up just the same way down a hidden seam, revealing a pair of knee-high riding boots with a laced instep. I really wish I had clothing like this, he said, talking down to Dari's boots. Dari reached forward and tickled at one of the screen-printed galloping hooves of Leo's shirt horse. Put all your pocket change in the piggy bank. That hoof happened to be right over Leo's left nipple, and the fox reached up to push Dari's hand out of the way. The dog snatched it away, then patted the fox's hand down against his chest. The two met eyes for a few long seconds, and then Dari grasped Leo by the wrist, spreading them apart and leaning forward. Leo froze and slumped back against the cabinet, instantly panicked by the firm grasp. Dari nosed into his ear again. Tell me you want your surprise. Please, Leo whimpered, ear swinging back. He almost said, please stop, but his erection made him reconsider. I want my surprise. Dari let go and stepped back, then pointed his gloved hand over to the sofa, still staring at Leo. He furrowed his brow, but kept the grin. Sit. Leo quickly padded over, heart pounding in his chest. Not only was Dari wearing extremely hot leather gear, the boots and gloves alone would have stirred him until he toughened up, but the dog was playing him a little tough. If only Dari knew what would happen if he played too tough with the fox, though. Leo lost himself as he thought of what he would eventually have to tell his dark canine lover and sat down on the duffel bag by accident. It was lumpy and it clunked inside. Dari didn't look very concerned. I'm not a dog, he said, watching as Dari strode over. With his regular clothes on, Dari had looked a bit yuppie-ish. With the leathers on, he moved with a calculated shoulders-back strut. Mm-hmm. You're a fox. Open up the bag. Leo rubbed at his upper arms. Nerves wound up enough to give him butterflies and the dull ache that replaced the prickling cold feet most would get. He used the spandex cuff as an excuse to fiddle. Dari stared at him, then at the bag, arms curled in front of his tight chest, glove fingertips drumming on one arm. Leo gave in and unzipped the bag. Inside, more leather, more black. Cuffs. Cuffs and straps and some other unidentifiable things. Rope. A gag or three. Metal clips. Gauntlet binders. Enough gear to tie up everyone Leo knew personally, all at once. No wonder it was heavy. The fox bit his lip, inhaled, and rocked back. I, I, his erection drained to nothing. Cold water ran down his spine. It was exactly what he thought it would be, feared it would be. Dari frowned. I'm sorry, I thought. Leo swallowed hard, then milked his upper arms again, blood vessels confused with what to do. I, I don't know if I can do that kind of thing, Dari. Dari sighed and sat down then reached forward and put a hand on Leo's thigh, leather toying only with the fur forward of the shorts cuff. Leo's tail hugged against his leg on that side, and the dog gave it a gentle brush out. I thought you'd like it. I thought it came with the territory, the leather, and... Leo put his hand on top of the dog's glove leather and felt his cock swell again. No, I don't mean that I don't want it. I mean, I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's safe. Dari put on his best warming smile, but it just exposed teeth. Of course it's safe. I never do anything stupid or hurtful. Not to you. The dog tipped his muzzle down to the side when Leo still didn't seem to accept Dari's interpretation. Only two dates, and words like that? Leo let out a soft whine and smiled, rolled his eyes. Come on, Dari. I'm not, I mean, I physically don't know if it's safe to tie me up. The Boceron cocked his head to the side and let out a chesty roar, then blinked. I have a lot of practice, Leo. It's mostly leather gear, too, and that's easy to adjust, not like rope. I... No, no, I can't. 
Leo huffed and palmed at his muzzle. Fox purred into it and then stood up. Dari, too, can play at this game. Leo practically jumped up from the sofa, turned one way, then the other, black hands held up in front of his ribs. Embarrassed but determined, the vulpine marched through the kitchen, into the back hallway, into the master bedroom. Dari brought up the rear with a hollow clop of fine leather boot heel. Leo rooted in his closet, hunkered down, tail waving as he cleared some of the fallen shirts off his version of Dari's toy bag. It was more of a flight case, aluminum edge wrapped in rubberized black skid panels. I didn't mean I was afraid you would hurt me, like I would go too far. I'm afraid you'll accidentally break me. All of Leo's attention focused on his tool case, his life tool case. Dari, I'm reconstructed. I told you that, right? Dari squinted and thought. Re- His eyes popped open and he leaned back, hand reaching out to grasp onto the back of Leo's writing desk chair with a squeak of leather on leather. What? No, you didn't. Leo shut the case and turned around, something in one of his hands. Well, I am. It's a long story. It's not very sexy. But now that I know you want to tie me up, you get to know more about me. You like gloves. Take your right one off and put this on. He handed the dog something that looked like a skin-tight spandex gauntlet with flexible glossy parts down the underside of the thumb and forefinger. The garment had Dari's interest in a second. He skinned off his glove and took the new one, sniffed it, looked inside, snuffled again. It's certainly interesting. He pulled it on, flexed his fingers out into the very tips, twisted his hand around. Hmm, nothing's happening. I was expecting it to do something to me, like maybe a superpower? Leo stuck his left arm out, palm down. Grab my arm, kind of run your thumb up from the wrist along the underside, along the vein or tendon or whatever you feel that kind of soft spot all of a sudden press in a bit then grip and turn and then pull dari cocked his head again but squinted and twisted the look said that leo was crazy uh sure dari said flexing his fingers into the new black glove he did what leo asked snatching at the fox's wrist the way he'd done before this is kind of turning me on so sorry if you weren't wanting that The fox half grinned, knowing that what was about to happen in front of the clueless dog. Half grin, half grimace. Surprise indeed. I figured it would, but just you wait. It's nothing like what you brought. Uh, Dari's thumb pressed in at the aforementioned spot, prompting the fox's wincing grunt. Leo's hand, which had been slightly twitching and feeling at the dog's furry forearm, simply held fingers out straight. Dari looked down at it, squinted, held his other hand out flat. Leo recognized it as a twitch of puppy slap reflex, the ground smack that playing canines used. The Boceron twisted and pulled until something clicked inside the fox's arm, and the entire forearm came off in his newly gloved hand. Holy shit! He dropped the synthetic limb, and Leo caught it with a swipe of his hand. Leo's stump had a vaguely electronic look, metal with a seal around the very rim, pins and contacts and tubes and clear things that looked like fiber cable. About three quarters of an inch around was something squishy, and then fur on the outside that matched the orange red of his elbow and upper arm. The now frozen arm had the matching plug to Leo's socket. Dari looked ready to faint, ears trembling, tail swung under his legs enough that it actually curved out by his leathered knees. His breathing still came through, body looking more like he'd just taken a beating instead of shrinking back in horror, chest compacted, shoulders lifted, neck corded and taut under the black shiny fur. Surprise, Leo said, forcing half a smile. That's a key glove. He needed to take these things off. Leo picked up his arm and used it as a prop, black furred forearm and hand looking like nothing more than inert demonstration parts. So, uh, they don't come off accidentally. The only other way is the strain relief, which is further back in the joint. It's built into my upper arm bone, and it's stronger than I am, so if you if you work it too hard or at the wrong angle, it can crack the bone real easily, and that's a huge, huge problem to fix. He stopped forcing the smile and just grimaced, then shrugged. Dare sat down on the bed with a rough thump, slapped his hands at his thigh, one leathered, one still in the key glove. It cracks what? The dog gave Leo's separated body parts a thousand-yard stare. Leo sighed and held his synthetic forearm up. 
this, these cybernetic parts are stronger than the rest of me, so if you put too much strain on it, it'll crack right there. He tapped his elbow with his own fingers, using the stiff digits to point. I don't usually tell people about it because it freaks them out, but you can't tie me up because it might strain it just the wrong way. The explanation did nothing to mollify Dari's horror. Leo inhaled and sighed. It won't kill me. It's mostly inconvenient and expensive to fix. Dari's look of horror drained away into rapt fascination, muscles tight as at the chest. Dari's look of horror drained away into rapt fascination, muscles tight at the chest as he leaned down and pushed his head forward, watching Leo wave his detached arm like it was part of a mannequin. Such a fragile little fox, he finally said, eyes looking up from the mechanical connection that moved when Leo presumably flexed his now disconnected forearm. Hey, if you break the joint, I have to go in and get it all refitted. I have spares, but it's a big pain in the ass, and refitting hurts. They have to reprogram the nerve interface, which is like, is this really interesting, you? I mean, you came over here to... to Leo stopped as he realized that Dari had come over to tie him up, with the promise of a date as bait. He hunkered forward and huffed lightly. Dari rubbed his face with his leather-cut left hand, leaving the one in Leo's key glove to rest limp on his thigh. When you said you had your own surprise, this isn't really what I was expecting. He squeezed out a chuckle, almost wheezing bark at the start. It's not really a turn-off, it's just unexpected. I guess you have to tell me at some point, huh? Sorry if I offended you. I really like bondage. I really like bondage. Even the littlest bit, like if you're taking your shirt off and it gets tangled around your arms. I don't need it, though. Hmm? Leo smiled back. In hindsight, maybe if I was... If I wasn't me, I'd have taken my arm off and pulled a prank with it. Or maybe I'd have just put it on my profile. But it didn't seem important in that way, you know? As Leo talked, Dari looked anxious and excited, ears up straight, but eyes flicking around, body moving constantly. So doggish, Leo thought, for someone who had minutes before played master and ordered the fox around. The dog settled his brown eyes on Leo's groin, then perked his ears up, forming a thought quickly enough that he sniffed. Wouldn't it be crazy if you're... Oh yeah, it's crazy, Leo said, wagging his tail as he pulled his shorts down, unable to resist pushing the situation into joyful macabre. Out flopped one uncut, mostly humanoid dick and a pair of cream-furred balls. It's... it works great. You'd never know unless you tasted it, or sniffed, I guess, or looked real close. Leo tucked his muzzle down. The last time, when I was grinding on you and we were making out, I came all over the inside of my jock. It felt great. I just pretended it was turned on by that specific... You're kidding. That's not real? Dari took a huge breath and let it out, tilted his head to the side like a listening dog. Uh-huh. Scout's honor. My head's real. Most of my internal organs, except my kidneys. Most of my fur and skin. That's all prime fox meat. Lips to ass. Everything else... It was an accident. I was in a fire. Leo braced for the inevitable flashback, only to let out a breath in the sigh when he only got a twinge. The actual accident was just a flash, a jumble of things happening. The trauma was delayed and extended afterwards. Dari gave Leo a good, firm squeeze around the shoulders. I'm sorry. You really made lemonade out of it, though, huh? I never would have guessed, especially not this. The dog traced his black fingers over Leo's cock. Thumb tip sliding around the fox's cock tip as he peeked out from under the foreskin. Within seconds, a lot more than just the tip was showing. Fox flesh swelling into a hard, pleasant-sized direction. Only it wasn't fox flesh at all. Leo groaned and leaned his head on Dari's shoulder, tucked his muzzle down against his chest, and arched his back to press into the warm, leathery grip. I have an idea. It's it's a really, really, it's really, really, really extra filthy. But maybe you'd like it if you like leather and bondage and c control. Is it where I take all your limbs off? Dari spoke very gently, but he kept his body at a canine attention even while he leaned in close. Leo sputtered. What? I'm not into being an amputee, not really. I met this guy once. He told me he wanted to see me without all my limbs. He got my legs and one arm off and... I freaked out. I kind of attacked him. He was going to leave me helpless for the rest of the day, but he wasn't expecting me to beat him up with one arm. He brushed his head for back, then massaged near. But I... well, you... 
will have to take them off. I just can't do it all myself. You have to promise not to do anything stupid like that. The Boceron's face lit up. Trust me. Dari leaned in and puppy nuzzled Leo. Don't do that. You look like a puppy. You're a police dog. No, I'm not, Dari said, sitting up and brushing over his ear. I'm a security consultant. That's like a desk job. I don't even work for a public group. So what do you want? I mean, if you need me to take them off, but you don't want them to stay off, I don't really see what options there are. Leo looked Dari in the face and squinted. The dog's expression was entirely too bright for someone who had no idea what Leo really wanted. Well, go into the closet and get the big trunk out and open it up. Dari got up off the bed and set himself on his task. While he moved things around to retrieve the big black plastic trunk, something fell on top of it with a thump. The dog took it in hand and turned around, holding it up for Leo to see. A full head leather bridle harness, complete with metal bit, blinders, ear splints, and a black faux mane up top and down the back. I thought you couldn't handle any bondage because it break you. This is a bridle. Uh-huh, Leo said, crossing one arm, his stump pointed in the appropriate direction while his actual arm set fingers up on the bed. My head's all natural. Dara's response was to just stare. Maybe the dog's a little slow in some respect, Leo thought. Maybe he's overwhelmed. Maybe. Well, you can't really do pony play without getting tied up in a harness and arm hobblers, hoof boots. I assume that's what the bridle's for. I can't think of what else you'd do with it. Dari set the bridle down and pulled the big trunk out, then opened it up. Oh my god, he barked, then immediately laughed as he stared down at the contents of the trunk. You have got to be kidding me. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Dari lifted out a similar part to Leo's detached arm, only the new one was furred in black, shiny horse hair. Except for a little dusky blending near the connection, and featured an extremely realistic black equine hoof instead of a hand or foot. Leo blushed, and it hurt a little. This company, Animal Logic, makes this stuff. It's pretty expensive, but it's pretty awesome, too. I've heard of guys who they get themselves chopped so they can wear those. I could never do that, but let me tell you, I'm glad I'm alive, but sometimes it's really, really hard to be glad. And I don't just mean survivor guilt. I'd never, ever get any of my parts cut off just for fun, but since I kind of had to, well, lemon's out of lemonade, right? Like you said? Dari continued taking things out of the trunk. Three more hooves, two slightly larger, with more pronounced ankle joint in the digigrade style. They have all kinds. Digigrade ones for every animal species, paw hands, human hands for those few guys who have the weird cross paws naturally. Metal, leather, rubber, put him up on the bed, Leo said, setting his own arm on the nightstand. Dari stayed dead silent as he continued emptying the trunk. Next, a spandex bodysuit, shiny rubberized spandex that matched the horse hair when one squinted right. Then, a horse tail. You'd better be telling the truth about your head. I don't think I could handle that. I'm not sure I can handle this, but I guess I'm handling it pretty well, huh? Dari waved the horse tail around. He went to grab the final item, a velvet drawstring bag. He turned it around, then went to open it, then froze. He looked at the bag, then at the fox. Oh, no. Really? Really, Leo chuckled, then reached over to take the bag. I told you, that's not real either. The fox opened the drawstring closure and reached inside, then drew out a mottled pink and black horse penis, complete with quite natural black leathery balls. Leo had been in the same situation before with another man, right when he'd gotten the toy. The previous time his prospects for playtime, even getting off at all, ended when the horse cock came out. He braced for the impact of rejection. That's amazing, Dari said, eyes wide. Ears so erect they almost tipped forward instead of just facing off to the side. Dari then stood up, leather creaking, and fondled himself through his breeches. His erection curved off to one side, forward towards the outside of his hip. He stroked it with the fox's key glove, spandex against black leather. Leo watched Dari's reaction, took a deep breath, and let it out along with all of his sexual rejection anxiety. I don't like my body, and that it feels wrong. I can always tell I'm not normal. He immediately held up his remaining fingers in case Dari was going to scold him for being angsty. So I love to wear spandex, tight clothing, leather, rubber, things like that to cover it, but always makes me feel something. Like I want to have a 
a new skin or a new everything. Then I realized that I could actually be something different, something new. I've always loved horses in this kind of low-level way. They're just so beautiful, beautiful and really, really sexy. So he took a deep breath to replace the air he squeezed out with the words. You want me to turn you into a pony, Dari said, closing up the empty trunk and then sliding it off the bed. Leo didn't answer, instead grabbing for the horse dick. His face burned so hot that he had to squint his eyes and lean back like he was wielding something hot. I'm going to put this on myself. Let me have that glove back. The fox motioned for Dari's right hand, and the dog held it out. Leo peeled the glove off his canine partner and slid it onto his own hand. He reached down, massaged around the base of his cock, and let out a sal- yelp face wrinkling up. Just like my arm. You just need the key glove on, and then you hold it at this joint, then push and twist. Does it hurt? Feels like I'm having a urology exam, Leo grunted, then twisted. His cock stopped being flexible and turned completely motionless, then came off entirely. I guess that means it either hurts or feels really great, depending on whether you like things shoved up inside your cock. Dari turned away with a cluck in the back of his throat. Sorry, I don't think I can watch that. It's okay. I have nightmares about it sometimes myself, Leo said with a shrug, then took the equine tool and cradled it up to its port. It attached with a click and a quiver that ran up his spine. That uncomfortable stick and penis burn melted away and he sighed. You can look now. Dari turned around and stared at Leo. The fox's new cock drooped to the side and swelled up, sank a little, swelled up, bobbed. The balls gently shifted in their sacks. Dari repeated his cock milking from before, grunting as he massaged his bulge with leather on leather from his dress gloves. That is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Wait, did I say that already? Maybe the second most. I mean, after the Boceron mimed the action required to unlatch Leo's arm, then the one he just learned but five minutes later. I feel like I'm inside a movie. Leo pulled the key glove back off and handed it back. Dari had put his own back on, and this time just slid the spandex on over his black dress leather. Leo's newfound cock throbbed up to a full, unflared erection as he watched the Boceron fiddle with the leather and stretchy fabric. Go on, he urged, gaze constantly dropping to watch his equine cock throb and swell, then droop back down. Dari, I need your help. I can't... Dari had gone back to his masturbatory reverie when he'd slid the glove on, but snapped back out without any warning. He leaned down and felt around the fox's left calf, trying to find the equivalent special point. His thumb sank against a weak spot, and he twisted, then pulled. He set Leo's left foreleg aside. I can't believe I just took your leg off. Every time you do it, I I do it. You wince. Does it hurt? Not bad. Just like when you hit your funny bone, Leo scooted back on the bed, now missing both left limbs. When he had tilted back against his row of pillows, Dari crawled onto the bed and grabbed for a second calf. Hey, you're pretty enthusiastic for this. I thought your eyes were going to pop out of your head when I first showed you, Leo said, swallowing as he watched Dari's eyes fixate on his remaining arm. Dari had said to trust him just minutes before. I can't imagine how it feels. I can imagine how you feel, though, Dari set the fox's leg aside, then reached for his arm. Leo immediately tensed and reached forward, then clutched out at the dog's gloved fingers. The stroke of leather on fur and finger pad made his cock twitch, but the panic made it stay mostly soft. Dari, maybe you should try putting one on me first, so you know how to do it? Leo stared at Dari's face, the dog's sudden determination, sudden change of attitude. Dari was no longer startled, but tolerant, but he was the same dog who had shoved Leo up against his linen closet, just rough enough to scare him. Maybe you should ask me for what you want. Despite Leo's clutching fingers, Dari maneuvered his thumb into the right place, pushed in, and twisted. Off came the final limb, leaving Leo completely helpless. Leo collapsed in on himself. His entire ability to do anything by himself was contained in RFID tags woven into the spandex fabric of that key glove, now on his supposed new boyfriend's right hand. Dari, please, Leo's gorge rose, and he panicked, feeling like he was sick and strangled at the same time. He went to grab for his throat out of instinct, but all he did was bring into view his stump's glittering metal computer and bio-interface. You know what I want. I told you. You told me. You figured it out. 
Ask me for what you want, Leo. Say it. Leo, body rendered useless, wondered if he'd screwed up. Maybe it somehow glossed over Dari's interest in the online profile. Leather, role-playing, a few real hobbies, no mention of bondage, but it was implicit. It had to be on a website like Kinkfest. No mention of pony play. He stared up at Dari, and the dog stared back, gloved hands at his hips. Key glove mocking him as it gripped at the dog's polished leather basket weave police issue belt. Leo's dissociative pondering crumbled back into creeping panic. He needed his limbs back. He'd do anything to get them. I want you to turn me into a pony, sir. I thought maybe I could tie you up, that you'd warm up to it. Just start off a little slow. A little rope, maybe just a pair of handcuffs, then a gag. No, you don't want to be just tied up. You want to be a pony. Dari stayed there in his patronizing pose, cock straining so hard in his leathers that his knot began to add a second lump above his balls. Dari, please, 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 please! Leo whined, eyes closed, face staring at the ceiling. He opened them again to Dari standing over him, bridle in hand. You are not going to speak once I put this on you. You are a pony. The statement was meant to be a reminder, but it turned into a warning. The Boceron fitted the bridle into place over Leo's face, bit stuffed back into the hinge of the fox's jaw. You're my pony. Dari picked up one of Leo's arm hooves and looked around at it, then made it up with the corresponding stump socket. After a bit of twisting, it clicked into place. Leo yelped and swatted his hand. Instead of fingers slapping against Dari's wrist, his hoof swung and thumped against it. The fox stared down at himself as Dari readied and applied the second hoof spasming again but with less of a body shock. His hand felt like it was balled into a fist, comfortable but useless. He tried to move his fingers, but they just stayed balled up, at least from the sensation. To the outside world, there was only a gleaming hoof. Dari smiled at it. Dari worked on Leo's equine calves, struggling away from a couple of leg kicks out of the fox as the sensations plugged in and they evened out. Dari worked on Leo's equine hooves, ducking away from a couple of leg kicks out of the fox as the sensations plugged in and evened out. When the second hoof was in place, Leo kicked and rolled right off the bed, bolting up with his arms raised like a begging pup, hooves dangling. Whoa there, I'm not finished, Dari barked, then lunged right after Leo, crowding him back to the bed. The next item took the most effort, the black spandex bodysuit, which zipped up the back but needed Leo's limbs fed into it first. Thankfully, Leo was helpful, offering a token struggle before straightening his newfound limbs into the black, almost iridescent fabric. The final touch. Dari got the key glove back, unplugged Leo's tail, and attached the horse tail, black strands tapered halfway, coming to life like a snake as he fitted the contacts into place. Leo's initial freakout seconds earlier came from overstimulation at having his first full pony experience. When Dari helped him into the spandex, Leo's fearful arousal of new things faded away. He felt like someone else. Something else. No longer was he a fox, he was a pony. He carefully climbed off the bed and stepped around the room, tossing his head back and snorting, drool collecting onto his lip and flinging away in a wet strand whenever he tossed the bridle's faux mane attachment. Somehow, swallowing didn't seem to come to mind. You make a great pony, Dari said, stroking the bridle's mane brush back, then hooked two gloved fingers around one of the rings where the leather straps met up. How about you come here? Dari backed up out of the bedroom, lightly tugging Leo along. Leo didn't have anything of the guidance, putting up increasing resistance the closer he got to the door. When Dari readjusted his finger grip, the pony fox bucked back and clopped over to the wall, then backed himself right into a corner. He pranced in place, whinnied as best he could, and then started trying to circle the room. Dari grabbed into the bridle's reins and clutched them both up in a gloved hand, then petted down Leo's muzzle as he again tried to drag him into the exit. You keep holding up, and I'm going to have to slap you. Leo flicked his tape tail up and followed along as Dari tugged, hooves held up in front of him, still dangling forward. He reared back and let out a sputter, then slowly clopped into the other room on his feet, on his hooves. The fox had worn the leg hooves many times before, and they had clopped over every inch of the resonant hardwood floor in them, but no one else had ever been around to hear. Now he had an audience, and that attention sent the vulpine Leo somewhere else. 
In his place stood a shy but aroused pony. His teeth worked at the bit. His hoofed hands hung useless with his forearms held up in front of his chest. His tail lashed instead of it curled, and his dick bounced and bobbed like never before. I think you need some water, pony. Come here, Dari said, leading Leo to the sink. The clock changed from hollowed wood to the sharp click of hoof on hard stone tile in the kitchen. Dari stood by the sink, patient but alert, chest ruffled out in his leather shirt. As the fox approached, Dari opened up the cupboards and very obviously fingered through a number of cups and saucers. Leo's bad horse behavior died back, replaced by a wide-eyed stare at the dog's gloved fingers rooting through his belongings. The pony fox huddled against the fridge. He chuffed and mocked Winnie, then clopped up to the sidle against the counter, back bent slightly, tail arched, legs constantly shifting inside the spandex, two hoofed feet even clopping in place. He was curious what Dari would do, curious but scared. He tried to bounce on his toes, but only paced his hooves in place, brain impulses meeting the lack of appropriate parts. He knew exactly what Dari was going for, and let out another sputter as the dog's fingers seized on a water bottle. It looked like the generic condiment bottles that restaurants use to spurt decorative sauce onto food. Dari filled it up from the sink and then upended it. The dog squeezed the bottle, squirting water in Leo's mouth, aiming into the back and side so he didn't choke the poor fox. The vulpine gagged and swallowed hard, head bucked to the side since he couldn't suckle his lips around the squirting water. The bestial treatment humiliated him so much that he felt like his pelt was on fire, pawing out with his hooves but never quite bashing them up against the dog's forearms. Dari used up a whole bottle, but Leo barely got a third down, the rest wetting his face and making a puddle on the floor. Dari refilled the bottle and squirted more, petting down the fox's very real main ruff. After another whole bottle's worth, the pony fox bucked back and whinnied, Okay, okay, guess you're full up now. Good pony. Now, can you really walk like a horse? Dari said, holding the reins close to the pony fox's forced open muzzle. He slowly led Leo out of the kitchen, as much to tickle the vulpine's ears with the slow clack of boot heels and leather squeaks as to be relaxed about it. The pony fox twitched and squirmed, clopped in place, then gave a double clop of one hoof. Leo knew exactly what Dari meant, and he desperately wanted to try it. He just wasn't sure if he could do it. Leo walked out into the dining room and squatted down, then sunk forward, like a real pony. He crouched down on all fours, then took a tentative few steps with all four hooves clicking against the hard dining room floor. It was hard, very hard, and his nervous stuttering gave away to muscle quivers from bodily strain. He drooled because he couldn't be bothered, because the exertion made him breathe hard, because he wanted to stare at the floor, because he couldn't close his mouth. He managed to circle the dining room table twice before collapsing over against the wall, tail slapping against the hard surface. Dari moved in to help, but Leo flicked his tail against the dog's thigh and squirmed around, hoof knocking forward into the dog's chest. Dari grabbed onto the hunkering pony fox's wrist, then started fondling him. Leo nearly kicked, whinnying out, the sound unwavering and real as he reacted to the electric tingle of the glove leather on flesh. It wasn't his cock flesh, it was something else, and he had to take the prosthetic sensations no matter what. See? It's just your reward. It's just your reward for doing a great job out there. You made it all around two whole times. That's a long way for a new, fresh pony. Dari used a bit of what hybrids called dog voice with patronizing speech humans tended to use when talking to domesticated animals. Leo stared at Dari, even as his cock throbbed in the sudden leather-gloved milking. He tried to flare his lips, but there wasn't much to flare. Pony Leo was terrified. Fox Leo wanted to get off so bad his balls hurt. He squirmed away, only to stand up, reaching a hoof out to nudge Dari, then leaning forward to nuzzle at him. Dari let go of Leo's pendulous horse stick and took the reins again. And now, the thing everyone wants a pony for. Dari said, leading Leo into the bedroom, shoulders now confidently square away from the pony fox. A ride. The big dog nudged Leo up against the bed, body crowding up from behind, throbbing package getting Leo in the lower back. The fox immediately kneeled down, flickering his faux mane around as he hunkered with his hooves facing out along the sheets. 
Dari groaned and ground up against Leo's spandex-clad ass, then leaned over, a gloved hand stroking the bodysuit. Leo's body twitched and his horse grunts took a distinctively high tone, body-breaking character as he overfilled with stimulation. A wave of pleasure crested and left him, bleeding and slobbering all over his bed sheets from pleasure, then sunk into stinging humiliation, he realized that Dari could very well be simply turned on by the aesthetics. Dari sighed, with a tone usually reserved for that moment just after breaching through someone's warm anus. The dog spread his fingers up and down Leo's spine, stopping to stroke around the tail base. He slid up and drew the spandex suit's back zip down, exposing some real fox fur again, along with the pink pucker under Leo's new tail. The shepherd unbuttoned his own leathers and fished out his swollen sheath, milking at it with his gloved fingers until his dribbling sloped cock head slid free. Like most domestic dog hybrids, his was a feral style, as opposed to Leo's more human unsheathed link. He untucked it from the sheath, then stepped over to the nightstand and lubed himself up from the pump bottle so carefully laid out in the open there. Leo stared ahead as he kneeled at the edge of the bed, four hooves planted flat on the sheets. He stared as if the dog wasn't there, only to slowly turn and acknowledge the canine with a groan as he watched Dari slick himself up. The dog took his place behind the newfound pony, spooned cock head nudging at Leo's ring, slimy with collected precum. He leaned in and stuffed right up the shelf, penetration bringing a sharp faux whinny from Leo, but no kicks. He gripped onto the reins and pulled back, forcing Leo to back up and squirm. Whoa there, stay put. That's good. That's good. He sunk forward and drew back, then groaned at the warm, clinging pleasure. Leo swooned and dropped his head, snorted and grunted, spluttered and even whinnied when he'd suddenly hurt for a cramping second or two. He'd spent quite some years playing with himself under his tail, but Dari was rough. Rough for real, confident and not over the edge, but hardly considerate. Ponies were tools. Ponies were toys. Ponies were domesticated for riding and hauling and carrying and serving people and taking their master's cocks, even if it burned for half a minute. Leo's head swam, but all that came out of his mouth was a dull groan. Dari ground his knot forward and harder and harder, breath catching in his throat as he tried to reach ultimate pleasure. Leo subtly but stayed in the same pose, feeling the heavy pressure but still grinding backwards more than trying to buck away. Soon, this pony's asshole was milking, kissing at that bulge, then engulfing it. Leo let out a big, shuddering whinny. Dari nudged forward and Leo nudged back. How could he resist? The black and umber dog lost his hold on pleasure and roared over the edge of climax, cock throbbing as it tied into Leo's squirming hole, seed emptying as he groaned and whimpered and licked his canine chops. Dari started nudging his knot back out, then slid forward, letting the last few squirts come out as he nearly not fucked the pony, bringing another round of whinnying out of Leo. The leather dog slipped free and his cock slopped down, spent body dragging back. The rush of pleasure left him buzzing, suddenly affectionate. Now it's time for my pony to relax, Dari said, then stepped over to the closet. He moved like slow motion, cock still burning inside, tingling with the aftershocks of a profound tying orgasm. When he crouched down to root around, his dick tip dragged on the floor, shaft loose as it flopped around out of his sheath, still tingling and bloated. He found what he was looking for, a fleshlight toy with the asterisk of a snug asshole at the wide end. He took it and trickled some lube onto it, then brought it back and stuffed it underneath the pillow top cushion on the mattress. He put a pillow on top, then tapped at it. Hooves up, pony. Leo stamped his hooves onto the pillow and started immediately trying to hump into the makeshift artificial mare, pre slick cock skidding sideways and up onto the pillow on purpose. When Dari clutched at his shaft tight and aimed it just right, Leo took off, hammering into the slippery fleshlight with no moderation. The fox swept his ears back as he listened to the wet claps of his leathery cock plunging into the lube-wet silicone rubber, squelches and slurps as the hard-fucking slurped air in around his sizable shaft. 
The newfound pony whinnied out and bucked into the toy, hooves stamping at the bedroom rug, tail arched up, head bucking upwards, and sending some slobber flying out of his bitted mouth as he blasted his orgasm into the toy, actual twinges of pain crushing into his prostate as his muscles clamped down so, so hard. He pulled out and splattered the toy with a shot before Dari guided him back in, then bucked his last few out before tugging back again. The orgasm was a complete shock, so satisfying but so sudden, body fulfilling its needs and leaving Leo's mind behind to stare at the afterglow. Dari grabbed Leo around the shoulders and hugged him from behind, limp cock tucking back into his sheath as it nudged against the open gash in the fox's otherwise glistening black stretch chute. He guided the pony to kneel on the bed, then lie down on his side. Dari went for the key glove, while Leo curled up in an equine fetal position, sinking into the dark place that sometimes follows an orgasm. The dog felt up one of the hoof arms, tickling enough that Leo contracted tighter and stretched out as he realized what was coming. Leo s- Dari squeezed and twisted, and off came the hoof with a sort of faint sucking sound. One by one, he restored Leo's real parts, ending with the tail and leaving the cock to the fox. The last thing he removed was the bridle and slobbery bit. Dari worked quick, concentrating on freeing Leo. Once Leo could talk and use his arms to himself, he grabbed Dari down to the bed and clung into the leather dog, burying his slobber-matted fur against Dari's chest. He immediately started to whimper and sob, Foxtail limp against his back leg as his human emotions overrode the vulpine need to tuck the brush under. I don't know what's wrong with me, Leo whimpered, body shivering for a moment as he clung onto the dog's muscled arms. I don't even feel sad. I don't know what to feel. This is so weird. When you... when you... Did I force you? Dari said, stroking his gloved hand up Leo's black spandex back. I was so turned on. What... No, Leo chuffed, then chuckled, the sound interrupted by a post-sob heave. I I slipped out of who I was. I wasn't me anymore. I was a pony. I was a pony toy for you to use, and that's so strange. Leo whimpered as Dari gave him a glove scruffle to the head. I was still in there somewhere, but I couldn't... I've just never done that. I was scared. I'm sorry I'm crying like this, Leo murmured, then took another huge shaking breath. His clutch turned into an affectionate squeeze, then a relaxed slump of someone burning in both sexual afterglow and post-sob euphoria. Dari's face twisted with a hint of pain at the sour realization that he'd overwhelmed Leo. He cradled the fox, moving his gloved hand further around, across the fox's back, down his spine, tickling at his side until Leo squirmed away and gave him a rotten look. Red-eyed, but now smiling, drowsy. I'm sorry I scared you. You moved like a horse. I can't describe it. You even sputtered and snorted when a horse would, and you never let anything else slip past it. You were a good pony. I loved it. I really did. I guess I just got a little worked up just now. This this is hard to deal with. These are... Leo said, holding a hand up, then pawing over at one of the hooves. It's a lot of trust. I have to trust doctors. I have to trust myself. I have to trust other people. There's always something between me and the rest of the world. I, You want to put something there that you want, not something you didn't ask for, right? I think I've been there in a way. I didn't start off on top, you know, Dari smiled, then cocked a grin. Leo looked up at Dari. You want to put something there that you want, not something you didn't ask for, right? I think I've been there in a way. I didn't start on top, you know. Dari smiled, then cocked it into a grin. Leo looked up at Dari, and his worried calm dissolved into wonderment and bliss. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, just imagine me bound up and squirming on the floor while some big wolf wallops my butt. Dari dropped his muzzle and rubbed it in the air. I can't imagine what you've been through, Dari said, shifting away so he could truly sit on the bed, gloved hand reaching over to stroke Leo's naked thigh. What happened, anyway? Leo swallowed. Well, do you remember when they rebuilt Carson Street Bridge? You were probably in middle school. I was in third grade. Leo stood up and started to pace, both to help his feet wake up, and because he couldn't sit still and stare Dari in the eye. I was going into town to go to the museum with my aunt. 
The bridge gave way, and the train we were on derailed right into an oncoming freight train. We were going backwards, you know? Like the engine was pushing us so there was nothing in front, our car was the one that hit the train first, right into an ethanol tanker. Dari stared. I managed to get out of the wreck, and it was winter, so I was all bundled up. Suddenly it felt like I was wet, like I'd fallen into a river, but... I wasn't cold, it just took off and ran, like two blocks, three blocks, and someone mortified at the, at me running along on fire. They tripped me into a puddle. It was mostly my hands, my feet. Thank God it wasn't my head. I ended up getting a staph infection that... I lost my hands because of that. Then Leo gestured to his horse cock. Then he stared at it, realizing it was the remainder of his behavior. Oh shit, let me take care of that. He's turned away, snatching the key glove off the startled Dari. He yelped as he unplugged one set, then caught his breath in his throat when his own dick and balls snapped back into place. I don't want to know what happened to that part, Dari said, forcing a chuckle and motioning towards the fox's groin. No offense. Trust me, none taken. You don't want to think about it. I was just a kid, but still, I was in bad shape. Bad shape. I have memories of that awful shit. While other people my age just remember crying at their birthday party because they didn't get a pony. Both of them twisted to make eye contact at the same time after Leo said that. I didn't want a pony when I was a kid. It just took a while, Dari said. I guess it's a neat trick, Leo shrugged, rubbing at the back of his neck, then at his shoulder with his almost natural fingers. I'm still a freak. Don't say that. I mean, sure, it's weird, but you're not a freak. You can do just something awesome. I mean, full of awe, not just... Dari offered. Leo smiled. Yeah, I guess, his stomach growled. We can go out now if you want. The Boceron closed himself around Leo, sweeping the fox up in a hard bear hug, then loosening his grip into a much more intimate embrace. Leo clung onto the leather like he was kneading an enormous dick. You're amazing. I don't want to sound like one of those guys who just fawns all over you because you got him off. You did get me off, though, and you better do it again, pony. Dari gave Leo a hard nuzzle. I really mean it. Look at you. You got lit on fire. Not only would I never have guessed, but you look great, and you can become a real pony fox. The dog sat up, slapped his leather-clad thighs, and yes, we can go out. I'm thinking Brazilian steakhouse. Mmm, you just want to put warm cuts of meat in my mouth. Leo thought about his words as they fell out of his muzzle, and then quickly scooped at his snout as if to shovel them back inside before Dari heard them. I can't believe I said that! I'm not really like that! Yes, I do want to watch you eat delicious steak. I want you to come out with me. You'll have to be a little social. Leo sighed and laid his head on Dari's shoulder, then slid back and started looking for a respectable set of clothes. Mm Mm-hmm. You'll have to be social so you get used to attention, Dari said. Leo just looked at him, taking his turn to headcock. For when you wear those hooves out eventually. Leo's eyes turned from slits to gaping black pools with gold rims. You... He started to fur fluff from panic. Not tonight, Dari grasped onto the fox's arms and slid down to hold hands, tender and almost romantic. Leo still kept his hackles up, imagining that Dari's smile only came from the unique knowledge that the black hands the dog was caressing were not at all real fox paws. Dari squeezed and brought Leo back. No, the dog was serious. Thank you, Leo sighed, then let his arms go a little limp before he pulled them back. I think it's time for those warm cuts of meat I mentioned. Such words from a pony, huh? Dari smiled. Leo smiled back. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my reading was tolerable. And and our thanks to Retchen again for sending the story in and to Hawkwolf for writing it. And do be sure at the end of the month at Furry Fiesta, do be sure to look for your very own copy of Will of the Alpha, which has this story and nine other wonderful ones in it. 